This is John Gabriel, author and creator of The Gabriel Method. And as many of you know, I lost over 220 pounds or 100 kilos without extreme dieting and without extreme exercise. And I've now dedicated my life to teaching the theory, art, and practice of permanent sustainable weight loss. And today I want to talk about intermittent fasting. Specifically, is intermittent fasting good for weight loss? Uh, there's a lot of controversy back and forth about intermittent fasting. So intermittent fasting, there's a couple of different definitions of intermittent fasting, but specifically the one I want to address is this idea of going long periods of time without eating. So going 15 to 18 hours a day without eating and eating most of your food in a six to eight hour period. Now, as many of you know, there's a lot of conflicting information around this subject. For example, a lot of people say you need to eat a good breakfast and uh, you need to be eating throughout the day in order to lose weight, uh, to keep your metabolism up, to keep your blood sugar stable, etc. And then you've got these intermittent fasting people saying you just should eat in this short period of time. Now, my take on it is this. If you can do intermittent fasting without feeling hungry during that period of time that you're not eating, it is actually a really good thing to do because during that 15 to 18 hour period that you're not eating, your insulin levels are getting really, really low and insulin is the fat making hormone. So you want your insulin levels to get low enough so that your body can start burning fat because when you have insulin in your system, what happens is you lose the ability to burn fat. Insulin stops your body from burning fat. And many of us have a condition called insulin resistance. And this insulin resistance causes your insulin levels to be always elevated so that you lose the ability to burn fat. But when you go this long period of time, eventually, because it takes a long time when you have insulin resistance, eventually you get to the place where your insulin levels are low enough that your body can start producing other hormones that enable you to lose weight. So it actually can help your body regain the the ability to burn fat. But the key is only if you can do it without feeling hunger. If you're feeling hunger, the hunger is going to cause a low-grade stress, which is going to elevate your cortisol levels and your triglycerides, and the elevated cortisol levels will cause insulin resistance, the very thing you're trying to reverse, and the elevated triglycerides will cause leptin resistance, which also causes you to gain weight. So if you are feeling chronic hunger every day during that 15 hour period, it will work against you. Now, when you have insulin resistance, actually you typically will feel that hunger because what happens is when your blood sugar goes down really, really low and you can't burn fat, you get really, really hungry. See, for most of us, when our blood sugar goes down low enough, we can raise it by burning fat and elevating it. But if you can't burn fat because you've got insulin resistance, you're gonna be hungry all the time. So what I suggest is if you are hungry all the time, you start by eating a really good breakfast and eating every couple of hours throughout the day, having an early dinner and maybe trying to go from like seven or eight o'clock at night until the morning if you can uh, with, without eating and that will help. But you will get to a crossover point, especially if you're following the types of principles that we're teaching, which is addressing the real issues and reducing stress and inflammation and healing your gut and working through the real issues, you will experience a shift when you are no longer insulin resistant or leptin resistant. And when that happens, you are no longer as hungry and you can regain the ability to burn fat efficiently. And so your body starts burning fat, which is what you want. And when your body starts burning fat, efficiently and your body wants to let go of the weight, you're not forcing it, then you can go long periods of time without being hungry and that's the time to do intermittent fasting. Once you have reversed the insulin resistance and you have regained the ability to burn fat and your body genuinely doesn't want as much weight so your body is burning fat and you're living off that fat and that's why you're not hungry, if all of those things line up, then intermittent fasting is the best thing in the world. So if you get to the place where you are following the principles that we talk about and you are just not that hungry, then don't eat until your body tells you to start eating. Your body then becomes your, its own guru in a sense. So if you wake up in the morning and you don't want breakfast, don't force yourself to have breakfast. If it's like 12 o'clock before you're hungry, then eat them, but as long as, and here's the caveat, as long as when you are hungry, you're not ravenously hungry for junk food. In other words, you're not hungry because you have this massive blood sugar plummet. You're hungry just because it's time to nourish yourself. And when you're hungry, if you're craving things like salads and healthy proteins and healthy fats, and you're eating calmly and relaxed just for the sake of nourishment, 
then it's great. So if that's the case, then have a really good lunch, maybe have snacks throughout the day and a really early dinner if you finish your dinner at six o'clock and then you don't, maybe in the morning you have some super greens or some green juices and that takes you to 11 or 12, then you have just gone 15, 16 hours without eating and you have experienced intermittent fasting but you have done it in an organic way when you're not hungry. So wait for that to happen by addressing the real issues to reverse the insulin and leptin resistance. And when that happens, intermittent fasting can be one of the best things in the world. It's not going to happen every day. So for me, I experience what I call organic intermittent fasting. I might eat from like 12 o'clock till 5 o'clock or 3 o'clock even. Sometimes my last meal is 3 o'clock and I'm not hungry again until 12 o'clock the next day. Now I eat a lot. I eat high fat foods that's friendly fats like avocados and coconut oils and chia seed oils. I eat lots of protein, I eat lots of salads, and I probably eat lots of calories. But what happens is I'm burning fat all the rest of the time till 12 o'clock. I wake up in the morning, I'm not that hungry. I might have some super greens throughout the morning, and then I'm real hungry around 12. I have a beautiful meal. I have then experienced organic intermittent fasting. But there are other days when I am hungry throughout the day, and I eat throughout the day when I'm hungry. I never, ever force myself not to eat. So I find that I have this rhythm where I'll have a few days of intermittent fasting and then a few days where I want to eat all day, and that's just your body doing its own accounting. As long as you focus on the real issues that are reducing the stresses and the inflammations in your life, so that you are reversing leptin and insulin resistance, your body becomes its own guru, it wants to let go of weight, and it becomes natural and automatic. And there will be days when you want to experience organic intermittent fasting, and when that happens, let it happen. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. So that's it, let me know your thoughts and your experiences with intermittent fasting, and I'll speak to you soon, take care.